ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video where today we're discussing, uh, discussing the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy for the PS4, and soon to be Nintendo Switch. I played the PS4 version since I don't have a Nintendo Switch. <sighs> anyway, Vicarious Visions produced this and apparently made it from scratch, which is pretty incredible, but let's not start on that. Let's start on what is the story. <clears throat> the story of the first Crash Bandicoot game starts at Neo Cortex's tower, who is a mad scientist. Cortex decides he's going to take over the world by using anthropomorphic animals and making them smart. So then he does that, what, just like, and he uses a bandicoot as his general, just like you'd use any other bandicoot. Then something but something sadly goes hair haywire and uh yeah he goes a little kooky let's just say that um then he breaks out and they used a female one who boy and then when we start it starts we begin and who boy the music is very good this is, the music is awesome, let's just say that, and it launches you right into three main objectives. One, save the girl. Two, save the world. Three, stop Neocortex from using any other Australian animals and using them for his evil bidding. And I just want to say how much better Crash Bandicoot is than Super Mario 64. Okay, let me get this straight. I am not a Sony fanboy. In fact, if anything, I'm a Nintendo fanboy. I keep up with Nintendo news more than Sony news, and I have a DS, a 3DS. I used to have a Wii. Uh, just, I think I've played more Nintendo games on Nintendo consoles than I have so games on PlayStation. Also, this game technically has side quests. Yeah, I guess Mario also has, Mario 64 has that. But it's not really that great. It's just like, uh, destroy all the crates in one thing or another. There's extra uh, levels and things. And the... How do I say it? Um... The character is very likable and understandable. Like, you understand who he is, what he wants to do, blah blah blah, and I guess you could say the same thing for Mario, but Mario's just a guy who, uh, got sucked into a world. Crash Bandicoot had something happen to him, and he's like, Welp, gonna kick some butt. And then, he does kick some butt, but in his unpredictable, yet also funny way. I enjoy Crash Bandicoot more than... Mario 64 also, because Naughty Dog never had anything to work with in this kind of thing, and really, if you're asking me, I think Naughty Dog worked harder on it. Like, there was only a couple of guys working on it uh, when it was doing it, and Mario 64 had like hundreds of people, because it's Nintendo and they're a big company. And Naughty Dog's uh, developers also had to go through horrible things. They didn't even have air conditioners on the hot summer days that they were working on Crash Bandicoot, which is very uns unsatisfactory and horrible, horrible ideas by Universal, who owned the uh, building and decided not to give air conditioning to Naughty Dog. But they still made this game, and... It was honestly very good. However, I will be talking about Crash Bandicoot Insane Tr Trilogy since the graphics aren't that great. I enjoy when uh, old school video games are brought back into new dimensions or have their graphics uh, given an update since it gives like COD, COD fanboys who won't play anything if it doesn't have the best graphics ever kind of thing, so everyone's happy. 
like the regular gamers can have that stuff and then the bro gamers aren't angry that it doesn't have the greatest graphics ever. Also, I heard that Vicarious Visions had to make this game from scratch and who boy, they uh, definitely got it very close to the original. I didn't really play the original, but look, look at a side-by-side -side comparison. That is an incredible that is a stellar recreation for something that's gone from scratch. For whatever reason, they didn't have the original coding, which is uh, pitiful. Also, it has extra levels now. Also, I heard that it has a big wide hitbox. I didn't, uh, I didn't recognize this, maybe because I don't really see that too much, but I don't think I saw it being bad or anything because, like, the hitbox was bad. I saw it because it was my own uh, fault because I'm not that great of a gamer. I wouldn't say that I suck at video games, but I suck at video games. Just a little better. So, I also enjoy how this game just actually has a story, unlike Mario, which is to save the girl. I guess you can argue that Mario also has that idea formula perfected, which I agree that that story is very good and I wouldn't really trade it for anything, but it's nice to see something that's like a little, uh, new and seeing the genre shaked up like this. Also, a lot of people call Crash Bandicoot a copy of Mario 64, which it's not. It actually was in the same development of time of Mario 64, and both were competing to be the first. However, Mario came out first since it had air-conditioned rooms. I'm looking at you, Universal jerks. Anyway, uh, I give this game a 9 out of 10 because it was I really did enjoy this game uh, I know this isn't the best episode but hey I worked hard on it and I'm pretty proud of it I will see you guys next time